u het u van harte welkom bij dit HR-seminar georganiseerd door HCMS NV, Stardom Media Group, Business School of the Americas en Zuid NV. We zullen het vandaag hebben over de need for the human capital revolution in Suriname. Vandaag zullen we het hebben over de waarde van human capital, bekeken vanuit verschillende invalshoeken, met name internationaal, nationaal en innerlijk. Ik heb enkele huishoudelijke regels voor u. Graag uw mobiele telefoon op silent doen. De toiletten die zijn buiten. Als u buiten loopt uh, in de lobby zijn dus de toiletten. U is bij het binnenkomen van ons een pakketje ontvangen. Waarin onder andere uw uh, notitieblaadje heeft. Waarop de naam van het bedrijf HCMS aan de onderkant per ongeluk uh, woord ontbreekt. Dat moet zijn Human Capital Management Solutions. Het woordje management is daar weggevallen. Het doel van dit seminar is om de aanzet te geven tot de ontwikkeling van menselijk kapitaal in Suriname, de capaciteiten van medewerkers ontwikkelen, personal branding, de verbetering van de positie van medewerkers, bijdrage leveren aan Suriname door afname van werkloosheid, en het, uiteindelijk, het doel is door efficiënte, effectiever werkende arbeidskrachten bijdragen aan hogere productiviteit van onze economie. Alvorens we van start gaan met de eerste spreker, vraag ik u beleefd om op te staan voor het zingen van ons volkslied. En daarvoor wil ik uitnodigen de heer Elvin Pool. God zij met ons Suriname, hij verhef ons hele land. Hoe wij hier ook samen kwamen, aan zijn grond zijn wij verpaand. Werkend houden we in gedachten, recht en waarheid maken vrij. Al wat goed is te betrachten, dat geeft aan ons land waarde. Opokondre mangung. Opo, sranan grong e kari ung, wan so peta ta komopo, wi museti kondre bung, stray def stray wi no sa frede, Gado de wi fe si mang Heri li bi te na de de Wi sa fe ti gi sra nang Dank u wel meneer Paul. We gaan deze dag van start met de, onze eerste spreker. Onze eerste spreker van vanavond is de oprichter van HCMS NV. Dat is de heer Sifaro Gayadin. De heer Gayadin heeft zes jaar geleden is hij gestart met de onderneming De Oplossing. De Oplossing is gestart als uitzendbureau en heeft in de afgelopen jaren meer dan 2000 mensen geholpen aan een baan. In die tijd is er ook een evolutie plaatsgevonden. Van uitzendbureau is de oplossing uitgegroeid naar een NV, HCMS NV. Dat staat voor Human Capital Management Solutions. En zoals de naam aangeeft, Human Capital Management Solutions is meer dan alleen een uitzendbureau. Het gaat erom dat op een innovatieve wijze getracht wordt arbeidskrachten te vinden die bijdragen aan optimalisatie van arbeidsprocessen. Ik nodig hierbij uit de heer Sifaro Gayadin.
de seminar zou bijdragen aan dat wat waar we in feite naartoe gaan met een, 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 een seminar. En uh, dat het niet gewoon een, een, een idee is die we een dagje hadden, maar het vloeit voort uit een gedachte, uit een behoefte, uit een niet die wij een tijdje hebben kunnen zien in de afgelopen zes jaar. Waarbij we hebben gemerkt dat er zowel vanuit de zijde van werkgevers, zowel uit de zijde van werkzoekenden, een behoefte is. We hebben gemerkt dat werkgevers heel, vraag, heel vaak aan ons vragen, kunnen jullie mensen leveren die direct inzetbaar zijn? Mensen leveren die eff efficiënter en effectiever kunnen werken? Kunnen jullie mensen leveren die met meer capaciteiten direct komen? Want we hebben daar weinig tijd voor in onze bedrijfsvoering. Maar we hebben ook vanuit de werkzoekende gezien, die komt steeds bij ons en zegt, ja, maar, maar waar moet ik werkervaring op doen? Ik kom uit de schoolbanken. Ik, 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 ik moet werkervaring hebben. Overal waar ik ga, moet ik een jaartje gewerkt hebben of twee jaartjes gewerkt hebben. Er is dus in feite een, een grote gap. En als we dus zo door zullen gaan, dan zullen we merken dat juist de mensen die uit de schoolbanken komen, dat wat, wat, wat het proces dat ergens begint, als we, als we denken aan onze thema Let's Has the Chickens, daar waar het ergens begint, mensen die beginnen in de eerste stap in de schoolbanken en daar uiteindelijk slagen, dat die mensen dan niet makkelijke aanmerking kunnen komen voor een baan. En, en, en daar willen we wat aan gaan doen. We willen richting geven, zowel bij werkgevers, zowel bij werkzoekenden. We willen met mensen van verschillende actoren gaan praten die invloed hebben op die markt. We praat, denken dan aan de public sector, de overheid, aan het ministerie van Onderwijs, de NGO's die zich sterk maken om human capital in de juiste richting te duwen. Willen we dus seminars gaan organiseren waarmee die verschillende mensen kunnen gaan praten. Waar we u naartoe willen uitnodigen om ook van gedachten te wisselen. Om te praten, te denken en op den duur ook een beetje te besluiten waar we allemaal naartoe willen. Want elke organisatie die progressief is, die een, een, een goed, goede visie heeft, een missie heeft, die wil grotere projecten gaan doen. En voor die grotere projecten hebben we meer mensen nodig of beter werkende mensen. En om dat te kunnen beogen, we zien ook wat de overheid probeert te doen nu, dan merken we dat er echt een niet is voor menselijk kapitaal. En 2006 begon het, zoals uh, meneer Baldewijn al zei. 2006 begon het met de oplossing. We hebben in de tussentijd een aantal mensen in verschillende branches, lokaal, internationaal, te werk gesteld. We hebben dus gezien dat het daar is. En we hebben wat doelen gesteld voor ons. We hebben verschillende methodes gebruikt om ook de doelen te benaderen. En dat is een van de methodes, is de seminars. We willen, zoals ik al zei, om de drie maanden een seminar gaan organiseren. En ik hoop dat u daar oor naar heeft en dat u bereid bent om die ondersteuning te geven. Door, omdat we de verschillende mensen uitnodigen en dat de verschillende mensen met verschillende invalshoeken samen kunnen, eraan kunnen werken om een, een, een missie te hebben om te werken aan human capital. De doelen natuurlijk, als we eraan gaan werken, heeft meneer Baldewijn zo'n beetje ook al voorgehouden. Maar het uiteindelijk doel is dat we kunnen terugkijken naar een aantal jaren. En kunnen zeggen van menselijk kapitaal is ergens naartoe gegaan. En we kunnen zeggen dat mensen die uit de schoolbanken komen. En ik kan uit ervaring praten, er komen genoeg mensen uit die schoolbanken die helemaal gedemotiveerd raken als ze naar werk zoeken. Ja, en als we die mensen dat menselijk kapitaal die we nodig hebben, juist hard nodig hebben, niet warm houden en motiveren, daar waar HR juist over praat, dan moeten we wel even goed gaan kijken hoe we dat over een paar jaren ermee gaan zitten.
Want dan krijgen we een heleboel mensen die weggaan. Dat zien we al. En ik denk dat dat niet de juiste trend zou zijn. Verder um, hebben wij andere methodes uitgewerkt. We zijn gaan praten met partners die een beetje op in het trainersvlak zitten. We hebben gesproken met consultancies. We hebben intussen een samenwerking met uh, TPS. Dat is uh, het bedrijf, uh, organisatie van professor Hubert Rampersat. Vandaag dat we hem ook hebben uitgenodigd te spreken vandaag. En uh, we hebben dat gedaan in onze Profit Center Education for Knowledge. Waar wij dus vanuit de organisatie gaan proberen om juist de richting te geven. Leiders te vormen. Want als we daar beginnen, de leiders die moeten motiveren. De leiders die ook denken aan uh, de medewerkers richting geven. Dat we daar wel die deugdelijke krachten kunnen gaan krijgen. En dat we aan de top beginnen waardoor het dan doorvloeit naar beneden. Maar natuurlijk zullen we andere methodes bedenken om ook gewoon van beneden uit te beginnen. Van, direct vanuit de schoolbanken. Daarom ook nog een bijzonder welkom. We heb, ik heb in de registraties via e-mail hier en daar gezien dat we heel veel scholen hier hebben gehad die hebben geregistreerd. Uh, ik heb enkele binnen zien komen. Um, een speciale welkom aan jullie. Het is een groot deel van onze doelgroep en die willen we ook heel graag warm houden. U hoort het al, we willen jullie motiveren om het anders te gaan doen en anders te gaan proberen. Uh, de doelen, ik wil toch even ingaan op de doelen. Ontwikkeling van menselijk kapitaal in Suriname. Dat spreekt in feite voor zichzelf. Maar toch nog de capaciteiten bij mensen echt gaan uh, aanwakkeren. Mensen gaan vragen om eraan te werken. Niet direct genoegen nemen met de persoon wat doet op een bepaald vlak. MS. Vandaar dat hij dus ook de, het voortouw heeft genomen om dit seminar te organiseren. Um, we willen een bijdrage leveren gewoon aan het land. Management. Dus als u daar ook interesse in heeft, mag u dat altijd via de mail kenbaar maken, zodat we u daarvoor uh, ook kunnen uh, warm houden of op die manier ook warm kunnen houden. Verder, een laatste noot, zodat de sprekers aan de gang kunnen. Ik sta hier vandaag met een uh, pink ribbon opgespeld. Uh, we zijn vandaag zondag deze week begonnen met een awareness die we op gang willen brengen over Human Capital. Er is een andere grote organisatie deze week ook awareness wil op, op gang wil brengen. Ze zijn sterk ondersteund door de Jaycees en dat zijn fellows van mij. Vandaar dat ik vandaag ook aan u vraag, als u op uw eigen manier een bijdrage kan leveren donderdag aanstaande bij de Pink Ribbon Loop. Um, voor, dus om de strijd tegen borstkanker aan te binden. Ik zie veel vrouwen in de zaal. Uh, het is ook de dag van de vrouw. Dus als we die dag extra bijzonder voor de mannen een bijdrage kunnen leveren om mee te lopen en het evenement tot een geslaagd succes te maken, dan uh, kijk ik er naar uit u ook daar te zien. Dank u wel. Dank u wel, meneer Gaidin. Um, meneer Gaidin heeft het gehad over JC's op het einde van zijn speech. We verwelkomen vandaag uh, wat later uh, op de dag de wereldpresident van JCI, die is uh, voor het weekend in Suriname. En die zal uh, ook uh, de presentie geven vandaag, die komt in, wel wat later. Uh, we hebben zo meteen de volgende spreker, of althans de eerste uh, presenter van vanavond. Nadat de spreker aan, de, aan het woord is geweest, hebben we een vragenronde van 10 minuten. 
U heeft een notitieblokje gehad waarop u de vragen kunt noteren. Als u de vragen van tevoren noteert, zodat we bij de vragenronde dat sneller kunnen afhandelen, dan, uh, dan scheelt dat uh, zeker in de tijd. De eerste presenter van vanavond is de heer Chris Da Costa. De presentatie van de heer Da Costa is in het Engels, dus ik zal zijn introductie ook in het Engels doen. His complete name is Krishnindu Joseph Da Costa. He hails from India and was born to a strict Christian family. He has 18 years of corporate experience, of which 10 years are in leadership roles. He has worked for multinational giants like Dell, British, Tel British Telecom, and Ypro Technologies. Before coming to Suriname, he was the executive director for Preservice Evolutions Private Limited, a KPO company, KPO meaning Key Process Outsourcing. And in Suriname, he was the advisor to Chonahun Group of Companies, to the Chonahun Group of Companies. He is currently the CEO and president of the Suid NV, director of growth strategy for HCMS NV, and founder and shareholder for Stardom Media Group worldwide in Suriname and India. The subject of his presentation, need for understanding micro and macro human capital management components and structures, and respecting those elements which are key to building good human capital and sustaining, and more than that, in the very first instance. instance. Hatching a human capital from the roots, whereby he will try to re relate global HR concepts and practices with HR in Suriname. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chris Da Costa. Firstly, a very good uh, evening to every one of you here. Can I hear a very good evening for everyone? Yep, okay. Uh, I think uh, Derek has already done uh, a decent amount of introduction about myself. So I'm going to leave that behind and move further. Well, the major topic for today's evening, primarily, is, uh, as you see it on the board there, uh, on the screen, says, let's have the chickens. It's time for a human capital revolution in Suriname. What I'm going to do, actually, is trying to compare uh, different elements of human capital that are not only needed in, uh, in the corporate sector, but at large in society. There's a major misunderstanding. When we talk about human capital, we normally relate this to the corporate sector. Uh, internationally, the paradigm of human capital has changed. The vista has broadened and the elements and factors of human capital has outgrown from the walls of a company into houses. We talk about social capital, social intelligence, and that's an extension of uh, what we called uh, or call as human capital within, uh, within a company or a corporate human capital. Uh, human capital can be studied uh, in two perspectives, uh, micro and macro. Human capital uh, management, that's a subject that is uh, in uh, study and research in a lot of universities world over now. The objective is uh, to ask ourselves this question, is uh, Suriname globally aligned and are you uh, globally aligned? Are we globally challenged? Or are we willing to challenge ourselves to be better human resource persons, not only as corporate executives for our individual careers, but also for the country? And as much as we expect the government to play a role, we have a role to play ourselves too, as individuals, in contributing to that. Let's look at the next slide. In the very first subject, as you saw, that uh, we, we introduced the subject by comparing 
the subject with chickens. as it has some productive capacity. Something that we have to consider and think about. We, when we consider human resource, we'd say most able to produce something which is quantifiable, which can be measured. And based on that, concepts like performance management, dashboards, uh, came into being uh, in the 1950s and 60s in GE and Motorola. Performance management is a, a metric-based system where you measure performance on certain parameters. And at one point in time, it was used in the the production sector in factory-based businesses where you had a factory, what you would call in Dutch a fabric, um, and, and you would measure productivity. But of course, as the service sector grew over the years, it was found necessary to measure service productivity too. And therefore came in the concept of concepts like Lean Six Sigma, which was introduced to measure service-based productivity which is pretty much uh, different from what you would know as ESO, which is another method of measuring quality. So human resource needs to be treated as an asset and not merely as a tool. Let's look at the following slide. So what is the focus word in today's conversation or speech that I have for you? The focus word is the word hatch. Uh, when I look at uh, the whole process of hatching, it's indeed a very interesting process. It's something that we can learn about how a chicken is hatched. I don't know how many of you have any kind of agricultural business here or have a poultry farm of your own. And if you have ever seen the process of how a, a hen warms the, the little egg and nourishes it with heat till the chicken is produced, you will see that there are some features in it, which I will show you in the next slide, which are very, very predominant. It's something that we can learn from. And let's look at it. Before we take a look at that, I wanted to share with you what's the meaning of hatch. According to the Merriam-Webster, it says it means to produce young ones from an egg by applying natural or artificial heat. Interesting part is natural or artificial. Let's look at the next slide. These are some of the features that hatch has. Feature number one, it calls for patience. Well, hatching is something where you would see the hen warming the egg and doing that continuously day after day. It calls in for patience, it calls in for accuracy. If the heat is not proper, the egg would not be hatched. Would you have an egg coming out of a chicken coming out of an egg uh, if there is no heat? 
You wouldn't, right? But it also has to be perfect. And just by the virtue of natural instinct, the hen exactly knows that. Nobody has gone and taught the hen. It's by instinct that it knows it has to give it the right amount of warmth. Three, it calls for love and emotional attachment. Very interesting. We think it is very easy to say this and implement it on the workforce, on the work floor. If you translate love and emotional attachment in business, we would describe it as emotional and intelligence and customer empathy, CE and EI. In major study all over the world, apart from another concept called CSR, that is corporate social responsibility, which has a close connectivity to human rights. But as much as we think it is so easy when we see the hen giving that attachment to the egg and we human beings are higher in intellectual capacity, therefore we have a lot of love and affection for people around us, that is not true. When I see, I, I work with various organizations in my career already. 18 years, I've worked with a few large companies. I've seen very few managers, very few CEOs really exhibit EI in the perfect manner with the perfect balance. And my last four years of my stay in Suriname, the experience has been even more worse because there is no training and coaching given to build EI and social intelligence within organizations. It calls for perseverance. Patience is one part, but perseverance is something that you would see the hen doing day in and day out. Even if its legs are tired, it would still sit on that egg. Right or wrong? Yes? It would still sit on that egg. It would have the perseverance to bear the strain on its body to make sure that the, hen, the egg gets the right amount of heat continuously, day in and day out. Five, it calls for caring. And six, it calls for authority. Hatching calls for authority. The hen takes authority over the egg. It decides that it has to be there. It decides that it has to protect. And when we as owners of different companies or managers or CEOs or head of departments or profit centers or cost centers, we need to be able to take the decision and the authority to hatch every possible human resource and treat it as an egg. And that calls in for some amount of gut, guts and courage. But if you do not show authority over your human resource and you have all of these other five elements, you would not necessarily hatch a good human resource. Let's look at the next slide. Now let's shift the topic. Let's jump and see, let us see how human capital is treated internationally and how we treat human capital in Suriname. Should we? Yeah. Okay. Okay, three major elements, very predominant. Three major predominant elements of human capital. First one, says globally, in the corporate sector and in governance of economies, there is a clear demarcation made between micro human capital and macro human capital policies. And that is done in the corporate sector as well as in the government. Why do you think is that necessary to have a separate micro policy a, a policy for micro human capital and macro. We all know about microeconomics and macroeconomics, don't we? Yes? 
What, what is there about microhuman capital? Micro is a lot more? Okay, what, what, is, what is macro then? Okay. Micro and mic macro. Okay. I'll come to that. I'll clarify what micro and macro really is. Emergence of social intelligence and its recognition as a social asset contributing to national and global human capital is highly misunderstood and misinterpreted in Suriname. But globally, social intelligence is considered as a major asset. One of the, one of the factors that contributes to social intelligence is, one is EI, is emotional intelligence. Two, is social networking. Social networking is by itself treated as an asset which, which contributes and develops social intelligence. The more, the higher the number of your social networks are, the broader the bases are, you learn more. Isn't that right? When you have different social networks, what do you do? You share knowledge. You, you are able to get information from each other. That is social intelligence created out of different networks. Am I clear? Okay. Predominant alignment of economies to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights with National Human and Consumer Rights Commissions and Forums. There's a link over there, and you can go on to the link, and uh, you can study the document yourself. Now, there's a Declaration of Human Rights from the United Nations. Now, this became a very uh, important and a guiding tool for companies and economies and all the members of the UN to align human resource policies in their economies and within organizations to the rights mentioned there. It's a wonderful document, it's a wonderful tool, and a lot of these points that have been mentioned in terms of human rights are basis for some of the protocols that went on to be developed as human resource protocols and strategies within companies. A lot of organizations and even senior HR managers in Suriname don't even know about this particular declaration. The power of the Declaration of Human Rights is that it gives you an international guideline to align the human resource division of your company or your organization or even the country and the policies based around your ministry develop a human resource system which fosters human right. For example, in Suriname, there is no consumer right forum. I can't believe that. You have two shops, one selling soap at 250 SRD, the other one selling it at 275 SRD. There is no price regulation. If the consumer gets a bad product, he doesn't know where to go to to raise an appeal. So you need, for sure, consumers' courts here in Suriname. When is that going to happen? After a century? It has to happen now, today. You have to be able to talk to various legal organizations to go forward come forward, share their protocols, bring it to the ministry, involve labor intermediary organizations to set up a forum which can fight for your rights. Rights are yours, not theirs. It's your rights, so you have to fight for it. And this whole process, it's not only about society, but even within organizations, within companies. Employees do not know their rights, or they are not educated about their rights, because employers fear if they tell their rights, tell them about their rights, they will misuse them. But that is because there is no protocol to control employees. 
why you would not want to share the rights, because you fear. But if your intelligence level in human resources is there, and you know how to control human resources, their practices and their behavior, you will, know, you will have no fear to share and let them know what their rights are. That is transparency between an employer and an employee. Let's go to the next slide. A very brief definition about micro and macro human capital. The lady here shed some light about micro. And to a certain extent, you are, you are very, very clear, you're very correct about micro. Technically, human capital always refers to an employee. But today, I want you to make that shift and consider micro-human capital as not one employee, but that one man on the street. Every individual is a potential micro-human capital. We say per capita income in economics, don't we? Yeah, why do you say per capita income? Why do you use per capita income as a metric? Does anybody have any, any clue whatsoever? Why do you use per capita? Why is per capita income used as a metric? GDP is a metric, right? Is a measurement of progress in an economy. So why is per capita income used as a metric, as a measurement? Why do you think it is used as a measurement? What do you measure when you say per capita income? Right? Giving better degrees in engineering. You would like to have exchange programs in the United States. return investment that asset can give to the economy. Make sense? Okay. Macro and micro structures playing in an economy. This is a very interesting diagram and it actually tells you in a very simple way the gamut of all possible structures that normally play in an economy. If you look at the circles on the outside boundary, you will have components like government ministries, NGOs, social service agencies, private sector associations, the whole circle outside with the small circles. They are all different elements or components that are working together to influence the three circles on the inside. The three circles being workforce development, community economic renewal, and private sector competitiveness. What are, what are those three circles? Those three circles are results of impacts on human resource of all those elements running outside. And when you look at the central where they converge, it says leveraging human resources. So the three circles outside representing private sector 
competitiveness, community economic renewal, and workforce development, they basically contribute to uplift and maximize performance and productivity in measurable terms for that population of human resource for the economy or for a particular target group. And when we speak in this context about micro and macro, this, for example, let's take into account government ministries. If, the gov if a government, a, a ministry of labor, for example, decides to make a policy change and improve this, the minimum salary level in this economy, okay? So let's say the minimum salary that people would start in Suriname is 800 US dollars. Sounds exciting? The minimum salary, 800 US dollars. Right, so the moment you're out of school, you start with 800 US dollars. I'm sure that'll be very interesting news to all the young students. Maybe you might empty the treasury of the country. But that is not the objective, the objective is that if there is a policy change like that, it's going to affect the whole country, right? It can affect it or impact it negatively or positively. In this case, it could be negative. We do not know. It could be positive too. We don't know. We never assume in business, they say. You never assume in business. You work with data. Okay, you've got to learn to do that in our companies. Work with data. Work with trend analysis. Historical data. Okay, I'm not going to get into that lecture. I spoke about social intelligence a couple of times, and I wanted to share with you some of the major factors of social intelligence which are in play and recognized as very important by the human resource department of some of the multinational corporations and better companies even in Suriname. So Suriname is not really lagging behind in this, but I think majority of the companies have to catch up. The mid-sized companies, even with 50 people, 30 people, can do wonders by implementing social intelligence into its spectrum. And if I run them down very quickly, it begins with empathy. And I'm not going to go through that because it's right there. So empathy, attunement, organizational awareness. Most of the times, our employees are not aware about the organization's goals. And this is a, a very, very critical element uh, in most businesses because we expect employees to understand everything that we either tell them or we say they don't need to know. Why? Why don't they need to know? They are your human asset. If they do not know what your goals are, how are you going to align them for heaven's sake into your goals. Is it going to happen with magic? We expect that wonder to happen. We expect people to just fit into our organizations. Jesus Christ, wake up! It's not going to happen. Yeah? Organizational awareness, the lack of it, and even realizing that it is important to be imbibed into each person is extremely important. The way we bring that awareness is another protocol. Influence, persuading others through discussion and engaging their self-interest through support. Developing others. How, do, how does one employee develop another employee? That is not exactly team building. Team building is something else. When you find an employee with a certain skill set. He doesn't have to be a manager to pass on that skill to somebody else. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? That you don't have to be a manager to pass on your skill to somebody else. If you have something in you and your manager is in accord and he would like you to share that with somebody else, walk up to your manager and say, I have this knowledge. I would like my friend who is a coworker to also get this knowledge. Likewise, managers and CEOs need to promote this in an organization or in organizations. Inspiration that is com articulating a compelling vision and fostering positive emotional tone, bringing out the best in others. And of course, last but not the least, teamwork. I say last but not the least because in most of the companies, entrepreneurs in Suriname, who I talk to and ask, they all say, we are a great team. Great team. We are great, we are like a family. Teamwork is not just telling somebody, I can help you, and closing the door. Teamwork is saying, I will help you, opening the door, and either walking in to that person's room and letting the per or letting the person walk in, and then holding the hand and walking through the journey where the person is facing difficulties. That is teamwork. You need to make a paradigm shift in social intelligence. I'm going to end my speech here on a small note that corporate social responsibility, which is a major contributor to human rights and is actually an offspring of human rights, social intelligence, another component, are two major elements which are missing in this country in the corporate sector. We need to find ways to measure them. We need to find ways to fill in the gaps. Once you measure them, of course you're gonna find defects. You need to know how to fill in those defects. And then you need to induce change, which then called in for something in management we call as change management or transition management. It's a very highly complicated process in organizations. If you don't have an expert, you can't do that. However small your company might be, it could be 10 or 20 people, organization, but you don't know how to do change management or transition management, you are gonna fail. So you might as well talk to experts to, to get your company in a change and evolution process if you really want to evolve. I can tell you this for sure. The Suriname has a lot of talented people. I have seen them and I've met them in all spheres, creative, non-creative, business. But most of the people think within a box. Most of the people think within their comfort zones. You tell a Surinamese boy or girl, what would you like to, where would you like to go and study? The only place he or she says, I will go to Holland and study. Why? The world is yours to take. You have to take it. You can go to the United States to study. You can go to the UK, Australia, India, China. Major learning centers. Why would you stop yourself from growing? You are stagnating your economy. Seychelles. You know it's an island, right? Off the coast of South Africa. It's one of the most booming econo economies today. You know, they did one small smart thing. Their lingua franca was something completely different. Just like in Suriname, our lingua franca is Shana Tonga, right? But their lingua franca is something else. But they said, 
We want to be smart. We want to develop. We want to grow. So they introduced English as their official language. I recently, seven months ago, met a landscaper who flew down from South Africa to Suriname to help a company here do landscaping. I was amazed with the statistics that he gave me. I thought I was only reading things over the net. But here I was talking to somebody who was an expert landscaper who was actually landscaped some of the top hotels and resorts. And he said, unbelievable explosion. The bird is in your hands. Now you can choose to crush the neck of the bird and kill it, or you can release it and it will fly into the sky and soar and soar like an eagle. You need to take that decision. Not Professor Hubert, not me, not Hasi MS Envy, not the prime minister of this country or the president of this country. No one can take that decision, but you will lead the change. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. The world is in our hands, indeed. Uh, we have nu 10 minutes for vragen. Um, ik vraag de hulp van meneer Pool. Meneer Pool gaat uh, in het midden van de zaal in de gang plaatsnemen. Als u een vraag heeft, kunt u die stellen en uh, overhandigen aan meneer Pool. En hij zal dan uh, de vraag herhalen via de microfoon. <coughs> Zijn er vragen? Good evening. You've talked about social intelligence. Um, yeah, um, well, I'll put it this way. If new fish arrives at work, new people, um, uh, yeah, work at place, um, the workers or the co-workers, some of them get a sort of um, uncertainty. How do you Well, when a new worker works, walks into an organization, I think the first thing that needs to happen is a proper induction program. If you don't have a proper induction program which introduces employees to the environment and to the team, team members, there will always be some amount of animosity, some amount of a, a wall that will be there between a new employee and the old employee. That's always going to happen. Second, uh, you also need to have a demography analysis of the group that the employee is going to be a part of. For example, if you're a group of techni technical experts and uh, she, a lady or a gentleman is going to join that particular team, um, you need to be able to inform the new employee about the demography of that particular team. Who is who? What is their background? What have they done? How many years of experience the person has? Likewise, the vice versa has to be done. The total team needs to be given a good background information about the people, about the person who is coming in the likes and dislikes, the weaknesses and strengths, so that they are in a line. Most of the times, this doesn't happen. Information, a demography analysis is never done when uh, new people wa walk into the floor. There are no good induction programs, I think, except companies like Suralco or Statsoli, which are the bigger organizations. You don't really have good induction programs in companies. And induction programs have to be structured. It has to be a proper structure, step by step, how the induction should be done, what is the goal of the induction, what are the achievables? Good evening. Um, Good evening. Um, you talk about um, social intelligence yep. and revolution in Suriname. It's very important for the human capital. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned also social, um, emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. Did you mean that social intelligence and emotional intelligence is the same? No, I think social intelligence is much wider. Mm -hmm. uh, emotional EI is merely a factor of SI. Oh. It's one of the components or contributors mm -hmm. to SI. It is not, it is not, uh, they are not separate. Mm -hmm. 
but you could call social intelligence more like an umbrella. And emotional is just a component. Is a social. component or a part, or it's sometimes even a contributor. Sometimes it's even a catalyst. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not even a contributor. Sometimes it even works like a catalyst to SI. But it, it is very relative depending on different circumstances. Uh, so the best answer would be that EI is a contributing element or a factor to SI. Mm -hmm. And how it contributes, what form it is, whether it is going to be a component integrally, whether it is a catalyst will depend on the situation. Okay. It's a contributing factor to SI. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Good evening. Good evening. You talked about social intelligence right. and you emphasized that employees have to know the goals of the company. Mm -hmm. You also said that um, the way to do that is another case. I'm yep. just curious to know, do you have suggestions? Well, uh, of course, there are various ways of bringing in SI. Um, there are actually a lot of ways. Uh, the thing is, you need to do a proper due diligence before you can recommend a particular way or a method. Most of the times, uh, every organization will have its own way of functioning. Even every department has its own way of functioning. Uh, that happens for various reasons. One is that managers, individual managers of different departments have their own management style. Some really are transformational managers, some are institutional managers, uh, depending on the different leadership patterns or styles that they have. Now that has a contributing factor to the particular department. So I would be very, it'd be very difficult for me to tell you one particular way. I can tell you of different ways, but the best thing to do would be if you give me a case study, uh, email it to me and send me a case study saying this is a case study, I can get back to you with an answer saying, Okay, based on these case study and based on these assumptions, this could be a possible process one, process two, process three. One last question. Good evening. Good evening. Um, you talked about uh, students that and, um, have to break their way through if they want to get where they want to get. Right. Um, did you thought of facts to uh, tell those students how they can break through or why they think in a box? Well, there are, uh, once I, as I said again uh, earlier, that uh, I come from a country uh, which was also a colony. Yes, India was a colony, it's a British colony. And uh, India was very similar to Suriname 15 years ago. People thought in small boxes. It took 40 years, 45 years, for India to break through that barrier. It didn't happen one good night. It took 40 years, it was a process of evolution, and different changes made in the government, which pushed that change. So what I would like to tell you is that although you might want to make some individual effort towards that goal, you would be able to be successful to a certain extent. It will never be fulfilled completely until and unless you get support from the government in terms of policies and procedures and protocols. Likewise, the government has to be a leader by example for companies. When the government sets good examples, the companies would be able to imbibe those best practices. And it, should be vice, it could be vice versa also. For example, you have very good organizations. They set high benchmarks. Companies, uh, government, department, and, and, and public sector could even learn from the private sector organizations. It has happened in various countries. China, for example, is an example where the government has learned from different private sector organizations and they have customized their policies based on the growth, uh, based on the growth of those organizations and the success and customizes policies for use. So it is very difficult uh, to state that only with your own individual intention and desire that you will be completely successful in Suriname, right? Because there are certain limitations. And you as an individual are not living in isolation. Are you living in isolation? No, right? You're living as a part of this country. You're a part of this system. You're trying to work with this system, and that is where the problem is. So until unless the system changes, the fiscal, the, the, for example, the law, 
the financial law of this country is prehistoric, right? Needs to be changed. When is it going to be changed? After 100 years? It is your responsibility to go and yell and ask for a change. You need to go out into the streets and ask for a change. So what you might want to achieve begins with knowing your rights first as a consumer, your rights as a civilian. And then these things will follow. But of course, if there are specific questions that you have, how you want help, please email them to me. And then I will try to address them to you. In, the, in this particular case, it's, if it's your case. Yeah. That's it? OK, that was one question. I'll, the last question, please. Good evening. Good evening. I see so much words and everything. I do understand it. But I didn't see uh, something that bothers me, the mentality. Yes, sir. You we didn't say nothing about mentality. But I think what we need here is to set an example to change our mentality. OK. Let me. There was more to follow. There was more to follow, so I couldn't continue further. So please uh, accept that. Uh, if you would like, uh, I'm willing to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with uh, everybody. Um, mentality and attitude are two major problems in Suriname. In management, there are three things. And I was talking to Shivaro, uh, Susan Baldeo, the uh, associate and executive director of uh, the site about this uh, a while ago. There's three, three elements of management. Knowledge, skill, and attitude. Right, the KSA rule, you call it. I actually call it, not KSA, but I call it KSL. Knowledge, skill, and leadership. Because I see attitude as a part of leadership. You can't eliminate leadership apart from attitude. If you don't have the right kind of leadership skills and attitude is not, the right, uh, is not a part of it, just by having attitude, you can't have leadership. A lot of people think if you have only the right attitude, you will become a leader. A leadership, leadership as a component has various elements in it of which attitude is only one part. Knowledge is another part of leadership. You just cannot be a great leader only with, only with attitude. Therefore, in my definition, I don't work with the normal management definition of KSA. I use KSL. So I think where you're coming to from is the, the attitude of people have to be changed. We need to develop next generation leaders. And I had a concept for how to go there, but I couldn't do it because of lack of time. So if and when you do need my assistance or you want to talk to me, uh, please email uh, HACMSNV and we can always uh, have a one-on-one -on -one conversation in detail. That's it. Uh, thank you very much for your time and patience. Um, I would like to uh, inform you that our partner, the site Envey, uh, recently, last week, uh, celebrated its first uh, employee awards night uh, in the history of its, of its, of its organization. And today, in front of this audience, uh, Seth Envey would like to give away uh, and the award winners the prizes. So I will ask uh, Natasha Roboro de Souza to come forward and uh, call upon uh, Susan and announce the winners so that Susan can give away the awards. Um, the winner is for most promising leader is Clyde Elshot. The winner for most promising employee, Randy Amania. And the longest working employee, Joseph Anabo.
Thank you.